Now that we're all sitting at home and social distancing, this seems like a very good time to make some instructional videos. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about how to use SciFinder to find reactions that we're interested in. And so I'm going to model this after the electrophilic aromatic substitution that we did as part of the metalloprotease inhibitor project. And since uh, ChemDraw has integration with SciFinder, I'm going to show you guys how to do this through ChemDraw first. Um, and then later on in the video, I'll show you how you can do this from SciFinder itself. So first things first, we want to find this reaction, right? We want to know how do you nitrate uh, phenylalanine specifically in this case. And so we can do that, go ahead and draw the reaction that we're doing. Uh, and I mentioned this in a previous video, um, how to do everything with keyboard shortcuts. I can throw that up on this as well. There's a guy named ChemDrawWizard on YouTube. Um, who does some very, very cool stuff with the software. So after you draw your uh, reaction, if you double click on the arrow, it recognizes automatically what is uh, starting material, what's your product. Uh, it's a keyboard shortcut, control shift X, it cleans up the reaction. I think it's in one of these options, in one of these uh, menu bars, whatever. Draw your reaction, double click your arrow. It highlights the entire reaction for you. And so here you can go search, search SciFinder. And it automatically knows that what you're looking for is a reaction search. So it asks perform substructure reaction search. You click OK. And then it goes to SciFinder. Yeah. And so once you get into SciFinder, you can see that it just lists a whole bunch of reactions uh, with different papers. Uh, sometimes it gives you uh, the same reference a few times uh, in a row. Uh, that's just because there are a few different methods in the paper. But if you scroll down, you'll see a whole bunch of reaction options, uh, six pages worth in this case. And so what do you see with each entry? With each entry, you see what they use as the starting material, what they got out as the product, the yield of the product, here, there's a little overview. Um, it shows you, you know, how many steps. In this case, this is a two-step, two-step reaction. Where in the first step, they added these reagents: sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and water. The temperature they did it, how long they did it for. And then in the second step, um, they threw in some base, sodium hydroxide. So, what can you get out of this sci finder? You can get a whole bunch of stuff. And so you can, first of all, analyze by a bunch of different options. Uh, in this case, it defaults to analyzing by the reagent. So if you want to see reactions where they specifically use ammonium hydroxide, you can click on that. And now 21 reactions with uh, ammonium hydroxide are displayed, and you can see reactions that use specific reagents. So what you can also do uh, is you could analyze this by product yield, which I think is cool. And you can just specifically select, you know, if you want a high yielding reaction, you click the high yielding reaction. 17 reactions with product yields from 80 to 89. And you can see reactions that give you a specific yield. So just to make sure that this works as intended, we can also search by journal name. Uh, and if we didn't originally have these references, let's see if we would be able to find them. Uh, so the first one is in the European Journal of Medicinal Chemistry. So we can do that. Let's see if we have some somewhere the European Journal of Medicinal Chemistry. Three references. Who is the first author? This person's the first author. And if we scroll down, we can see that we found this author, Synthesis and Evaluation of Some Novel Isochromin Carboxylic Acid. Synthesis and evaluation of some novel isochrome and carboxylic acid. Cool. What about the other one? What is that? Bioorganic medicinal chemistry. Bioorganic and medicinal chemistry. Three references. Let's see again. Uh, we're looking for Shu. And here he is. With synthesis and anti-hepatitis B virus. Synthesis and anti-hepatitis B virus. 
And then so once you get here, uh, once you find you know the reaction that you're looking for, we see that this is otherwise the procedure that we would have been finding. You can now, using this reference, just look it up. So there are a few ways of doing this. Uh, one, you can just click straight from SciFinder to other sources. It'll open up a new page. It'll start logging in through Brandeis, the Brandeis One Search. And you'll get to this familiar page where the full text is available. You can click on that and you end up right at the journal. So another thing you could have done is uh, at this point just highlight, copy and paste the title, and you can see that here it is, and it brings you here as well. Uh, and so I also mentioned this previously that if you're, if you're off campus, uh, it'll be a little bit more difficult to access these straight from the journal site but there is a convenient little plugin that you can use that I also have in a different video, um, I'll show it somewhere here, that can bring you to being able to download the PDF. And so now here you have your, your article. Uh, and in some cases, in many cases actually, there is, uh, although it looks like it's not in this one, um, a supplementary information file that's usually somewhere towards the bottom of the page. It looks like it's not here, but what that would be is a lot of the time the procedures, where here they have the procedures just uh, written out, just in the actual text of the article. A lot of the times these procedures will be in what's called the supplementary information file that you can find through the journal's website. Uh, we'll see if we can find an example of that in a little bit. So, once you have the paper, you can read the procedure, you can use it to, to, to synthesize whatever it is that you're being asked to synthesize, or whatever you want to find. So, if you didn't want to do this through ChemDraw, and you wanted to do this from SciFinder, you can do that. Uh, if you go, well, if you just start from the beginning. If you're here on the SciFinder homepage, Right down here, you can click, you can see reactions, you can go reaction structure, and you can click here to edit. So let's just draw out what we had originally, uh, except in the case of SciFinder, I find ChemDraw a little bit easier to use. Let's see, we're already, we're already messing up. Hmm, okay. Right, so you can see there, if you just click the elements, sometimes it doesn't, um, unlike ChemDraw, it doesn't realize that I want an H on that oxygen. So if you just type in here, you can type in whatever you want uh, to, to attach onto the compound. So draw one of the starting materials. Here you have, draw a reaction arrow. It draws the reaction, and here it automatically realizes that this is one of the reactants. And so now let's draw our product. Mm, okay. We can shift over here. And in this case, we want to do this nitration. And here it recognizes that this is also the product. But if it didn't have these reactant and product already on there, here's where you can add, this is this option right here, you could add a reaction role, where you can then just highlight the starting material, you know, call it a reactant, highlight the product, call it a product. And then you can go ahead and click OK. It'll search up substructures of more complex structures. We'll see what that means in a second. And click search. And so now you get back to exactly what we had if we just did it from ChemDraw. And so what it means by substructure is the first 
depending on how many reactions you know are available, the first page or so are going to have the exact reaction that we want: phenylalanine to the nitrated phenylalanine. And you can see that that's exactly what's happening for the rest of this page down. Although here you can see already that the starting material is starting to change. But if you go as far as the last page of the list, you'll see that they're not making the product that we're wanting. Uh, you know, the product that we have is here, but it also has some modifications, which is what substructure means, right? This whole thing that we added originally is the substructure, but it has uh, a few things that we didn't want on there, right? So here you have double nitrations, or here where you start with the nitrated and then add another nitro group, uh, all the way to some crazy other reactions where you start with a fluorinated phenylalanine, and so you can see, you can see what's happening. So let's say you were looking for a specific protection reaction, you'd be able to analyze by reagent, and if you wanted to find a reaction with a specific protecting group, you'd be able to find that, you'd be able to you know, analyze it by that specific protecting group and get reactions for that group specifically. Uh, and so there are a, a, f a few more things that I'd like to mention. First, let's go back to that um, supplementary information thing that I was talking about. Um, let's do a little self-plug. Let's look at some of Isaac's papers. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about. You'll see that you'll be able to just get the PDF right off the bat, but there's also something called the supporting info, supporting information, uh, otherwise known as the supplementary. And if you click on that, it brings you all the way down to where it is. You can click on the supporting info and you'll get procedures straight from here. This is also where if you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of NMR spectra for characterization of the compounds that, that were made. So if the procedure is not in uh, the main text, then you can find it in the supporting information. And a few more things, just really quickly here. So say you weren't sure of the exact reaction that you wanted to do, or what starting material to start with, but you knew that you wanted to get to this product. Well, you can just highlight that product, search SciFinder, where you have the selected structures or products, and if we search, we can see that here we have our product. In this case, they start with the Bach protected and deprotected. Here they're doing the reaction that we want where they just start with phenylalanine and nitrate it. So you can see that you could also just put in, hey, I want this product, how do I make it? Alternatively, if you just want to see, hey, what do people do with this starting material? You can highlight the starting material, search SciFinder, selected structures are reactants. We can search for this. And you'll see something similar. Here they just start with phenylalanine and you can see whatever it is that people do with phenylalanine or whatever other starting material you want in its place. And you can do this uh, from SciFinder as well, just by doing what I showed before. If you just show your, uh, sh draw the compound that you're interested in, and you can call it, use the, use the add a reaction role button. This way you can call it whatever you want, the product reactant, you can have it as any role, and it'll just search for exactly what you're interested in. So once again, you know, once you find the reaction you're interested in, uh, you can look it up analyzing by reagents for a specific reagent or a host of other things. If you know the author, you can just look it up by author name, uh, journal name, whatever it is that you want. You could also look up number of steps, pr you know, product yield. If you're looking to do this in a specific, you know, environmentally friendly solvent, you could look it up by solvent. Uh, and there is one more thing, uh, which is sometimes you'll see that a source has patent pack written next to it. Uh, and if you scroll down, I think there are probably going to be a few more. 
you know, here's at least one. So what this is, is that this procedure is coming straight from a patent as opposed to a, a journal publication, journal article. Uh, and in the case of patents, um, sometimes they're a little bit more difficult to navigate, sometimes they're in a different language that hasn't been translated over to English. So in general, it's better to not use procedures out of patents uh, if you can find a procedure in an academic journal instead. So I hope this helped you. Good luck with the exam, or if you decide to use this for anything else in the future. And uh, have a great day.